Hi guys. Hi. How's it going? How are you doing today? Hopefully today finds you well. Today, in light of the fact that the Sephora sales just started today, as a matter of fact, I thought I would bring you some recommendations as well as what is on my wish list. What is on my wish list is an immense amount of stuff. And my recommendations is also pretty heavy. So this is going to be a long video. So I hope that you're in for it. I'm hoping to be able to screen record on my phone so we can walk through what's in my loves list, what's in my cart right now. Um, real quick like. <laughs> Because I don't want to keep you here for an hour. I want you to be able to go and get what you need to get from the sale. That is always, always fun. And if that sounds like something that you're interested in, I definitely hope you want to stick around. For those of you new here, hi, my name is Donna. I am a lover of all things high end colorful beauty and self care. I also work in the beauty industry as a district leader for Ulta. So I get a lot of education in my position. I like to bring you guys all that education in the form of reviews of products. I also do a lot of hauls here, a lot of project panning, a lot of shop my stashes, and a lot of just general makeup chit chat because that soothes my soul and it probably soothes yours also if you are here watching my channel currently at this moment. So I hope that you find that this channel brings you all the joy that you want out of a beauty channel here on the YouTubes and I hope that you'll want to subscribe before you go. With that said, let's roll into this Sephora recommendations and wish list video. So today I am going to go over my Sephora sale recommendations as well as wish list items that I have in my cart or on my loves list and and I'm glad that you're here to share this time with me. I do have a lot to go over but before we do that let's just go into the sale just a little bit. Depending on the amount of money that you have spent at Sephora last year, you get to shop at different stages and you have a different title or a different tier, right? So the first tier is the Rouge tier. You should have or would have spent $1,000 or more in beauty purchases from Sephora last year. You get to start shopping on the 1st of April and you get 20% off of all of your purchases. You can shop as many times as you want to using that 20% off between the 1st and the 11th of April. The second tier is VIB. They get 15% off and you needed to have spent $350 or more at Sephora last year. And you get to start shopping on the 5th and you can use that 15% off anytime between the 5th and the 11th for as many purchases as you want to make at Sephora during that time. And then the last tier is the insider tier. Now you don't have to spend anything at Sephora to be a beauty insider. You just have to set up your insider account and you get 10% off and you don't get to start shopping until the 7th and you get therefore four days that you can shop and get 10% off of any purchase that you make at Sephora. Now I just have to point out here that there are a ton of opportunities for you to go to any brand that you want to purchase and get a better discount than 10 or 15% off a lot of times throughout the year, you don't necessarily have to shop at this Sephora sale. And I will tell you that even though I am an equal opportunity shopper and do shop at Sephora enough to be rouge at Sephora, I will not buy from Sephora if it's a product that I can get from Ulta. Because I work at Ulta, I get a better discount regularly every single day at Ulta Beauty than I do for this event at 20% off. So I am only going to give you recommendations on products that I can't get at Ulta Beauty but can only receive at Sephora. Now Sephora does have quite a few brands that I I really truly love that don't yet have a place in Ulta Beauty's walls and that's totally fine. Obviously I spent enough to be rouge last year. I just put up a video uh, this last week or this week maybe even talking you through all the purchases that I had made at Sephora in 2021. So for my own beauty collection I spent, I spent over 1200 or uh, over $1,100 at Sephora last year. So Obviously, I 
will shop <laughs> at Sephora. So with that said, let's jump into this because I have a whole lot to cover in this video and I really maybe should have split it up into two but I don't know that might come later <laughs> in editing depending on how how short I can get this I'm gonna try and be really quick though okay guys I promise I'd maybe 40 minutes time me let's go so first things first let's talk about recommendations on my recommendation list I have I think only like five or six brands but there are multiple products within those brands that i really really love so the first on the list is lys and i only have two different kinds of products from lys i am interested in picking up some more products from lys they are in what you will see in my loves list or in my cart for sephora right now but the two products that i have are the cream blush and the matte bronzer. So this high standard cream blush is quite possibly one of the better cream blushes that I have in my collection. I really, really love the pigmentation on this guy. It is just so, so pigmented for a cream blush and it blends out almost effortlessly. I think that you guys can see that like, that is just with my finger. It is such a beautiful shade as well. And they do have new shades that they came out with. Uh, so you will have like eight or 10 shades to choose from looking at this. And it's kind of a high end drugstore price point in the Sephora realm. So the shade is kindness. And I just find it's a really beautiful, beautiful shade. And you will see that on my list, I do have another shade of that blush that I would love to pick up. The other one is the bronzer. Now, when I first picked this up, I did think it was also a cream bronzer and I've been kind of in this cream realm lately and I really, really wanted a cream bronzer, but this actually isn't cream. And I was super disappointed <laughs> to figure out that it was a matte powder but I love this bronzer. When I first pulled it out, I was like, oh my gosh, that looks so yellow. It looks super yellow. I don't think I'm gonna be able to pull this off. This is in Motivate. It's for light skin tones. I love this. It is the perfect shade of yellow that it doesn't quite look like a bruise, but also looks like such a natural, beautiful tan on my skin. So LYS has it in the bag for their bronzers and their cream blushes. I definitely think that you should go for those. Really great price point. Another cream blush that I really recommend is the Tower 28 blushes. I love these for their packaging. They're just really sleek, doesn't take up much room. Also, the pigmentation on these is great. This does have a little bit of a harder press in the cream product than the LYS does. I do think that it's also a little bit more difficult to blend out, but it's also not hard. I do have a couple more of these on my list in my loves list to pick up. I just think that they are really great blushes. They go absolutely nowhere. Once they're on your skin, they're on your skin. And if you're familiar with my channel, you know my skin tends to eat up anything that I put on it as far as blush goes. So the fact that that one lasts as long as it does now, my favorite cream blush is still the Patrick Ta, which I have given you in a recommendation before. That is still my favorite, but these two are very, very nice and they come in very close seconds to that Patrick Ta blush. Another product from Tower 28, since we just talked about them, is their lip glosses. Now, I love their lip gloss for what it is. I don't think that they are a bad lip gloss. I think that they last really long. I think that the pigmentation is great. I think that it is a beautiful lip gloss formula and that it's not sticky. It's more balmy. I felt it on my lips for a long, long time, even after it no longer showed like color on my lips. I hate the taste of these and the smell of these. They're awful. And I thought that I got a bad one, but then I got a second one. I got a little um, one that's in my purse currently. And it smells the same way. So I don't think that they're 
bad I th or rancid. I think that the smell is just not great. I don't know what it is. It's kind of nondescript for me, but it just doesn't smell fantastic. You know, when you're used to putting a lip gloss on your lips that maybe has like a sweet scent to it or a vanilla scent to it, this scent is definitely not those and it kind of smells awful in comparison. It's not a horrible scent, but it also is not a great scent. If that steers... <laughs> If that steers you from those, I apologize. I have another lip gloss formula for you to try out, but those really are beautiful lip glosses in the way that they wear. Another lip gloss that I am wholeheartedly a diehard fan for is the Pat McGrath Labs lip glosses. I'm not gonna bring you one of her palettes. I, I mean, I really do like the Blitz Astral Quad. It's my favorite, hands down, Pat McGrath palette in my collection but as far as I'm concerned the standouts in her collection are her lip products. I love her lipsticks and I love her lip balms but I absolutely 100% love her lip glosses. They are just so impactful, so beautiful and I just have some minis. You can get sets of three minis all the time too but I would say that her full sizes are not a bad price point either, and I use them often. All right, another like balmy lip product that I have in my collection is this. This is the Laneige Lip Gloss Balm, and this is something that I purchased recently, actually, but it has quickly found its way into my purse and has become my purse balm. I love this. Not only does it taste amazing, this one is in the smell or taste gummy bear. Not only does it taste amazing, but it feels great. It's got a wonderful applicator, which I don't use, by the way. I put it on my finger and then put it on my lips from there. It's kind of got this like milkiness to it that makes your lips just look plump. And I also just really kind of love the way it makes my lips hydrated as well. It's much like the lip mask, only not quite as thick, but feels just as nourishing as the lip mask does by the same brand. I am overheating in these lights, which is why I don't like having the lights on when I am recording. Oh, it's so hot in this room, it's so hot. I have a couple items from Dior here that I really, really love, and y'all have probably heard me talk about them ad nauseum lately because I just love them. Dior is a brand that I got real familiar with last year. I tried a bunch of their products and I found some real standouts. And this is Dior Backstage Face and Body Foundation. I'm in the shade 3N. Amazing foundation. It goes on your skin like a skin tint. You can barely feel it. It's very flexible, very breathable. Doesn't sink into, you know, your fine lines and wrinkles. Doesn't exacerbate texture on your skin. It's just a really beautiful, beautiful foundation. And it's called Face and Body because it also doesn't transfer a whole lot. It's a wonderful foundation. It truly is. And then I also have the Powder No Powder. I would never. If you guys know me at all, you know that I don't like powders. I would never suggest a powder unless it was truly amazing. I still love the Charlotte Tilbury Airless Flawless Finishing Powder, but this one is a wonderful powder as well. I would hesitate to say that I maybe even like this one more. Uh, this is just a really beautiful powder that gives also kind of a little bit of lighter coverage for those no makeup makeup days. There's been many, many a day that I have put primer on my face and then this powder and my skin just looks flawless. So I would suggest this powder over and over again. I am in the shade 3N as well here. And then the last product from Dior that I want to talk about really is their luminizers. I don't think that this one you can get anymore. This is old packaging, but they still have their luminizers. And you guys, these are just so finely milled, so beautiful, so shiny without all of the crazy amounts of glitter that a lot of luminizers that are this shiny have in them. I just think it's beautiful and it reminds me a lot of just like a cream or a, a liquid luminizer that you can like pop into your foundations and have that like lit from within glow. 
that is what this reminds me of. It doesn't exacerbate texture. It's really pretty perfect for like maturing skin because I feel like it is a highlighter that goes on and gives you that beaming from the moon look that a lot of people want without all the texture that's included in many of those highlighting formulas. So beautiful highlighter in my opinion. I think that I have really just kind of fallen in love with Dior face products if I am honest. I'm gonna put some of this powder on because I feel like I am so sweaty right now. I mean, I don't know if you guys can see a difference, but I can definitely see a difference in just my face prior to and my face now putting that on. I'll be interested to see also in editing, I guess, what it looks like. So then I have a couple of Charlotte Tilbury items. I have one of her lip cheats here. This is the one in Pillow Talk and you guys can see this was a full size pencil and it is almost gone. When I first got this pencil, I was like, mm, I don't know if I'm gonna, I think I got it in a Beautylish Lucky bag. I was like, I don't think I'm gonna use that because I didn't like the Pillow Talk lipstick. It was just way too pink for me. This is in Pillow Talk, I think medium, and I love it. It is just enough, like not pink for me to love it. And it's not what I'm wearing today, but it is a little less brown than what I have on today, a little more pink than what I have on today, a lot more kind of mauvey, but that's not, that's not it. It's not just about the color. It's about the, the creaminess of it. As a matter of fact, in my wish list, I, or my cart, I can't remember where it sits in my Sephora stuff, but I have Iconic Nude in there because I've heard amazing things about that shade specifically, but those lip cheat pencils are amazing. Like I love that you can put them on and they kind of just stay there. You can wear them as a lipstick on their own and it, they just fill in all the, like I have really dry lips. It just fills in all the dry, like crackiness in my lips. And I feel like they're hydrating in and of themselves. I don't know that to be true though. I'm not gonna give you that as a, as a reason to purchase them, but the the longevity of that lip liner and the smoothness of that lip liner from a pencil is just amazing. It's it's not gel. It's actually it's actually a pencil. So I am actually kind of taken aback by how creamy this pencil is. You're not togging at your lips. You're not you're not pulling anything to get the lip liner to go on, and it's best creamy self. The next thing I have is the Filmstar Bronze and Glow. This is a limited edition packaging, but they do still sell the Filmstar Bronze and Glow. And the great thing about this product is it does come in a mini or the full size. I would suggest the mini. This will last you forever if you have it full size. But when I first got this in my Beautylish Lucky Bag, I was like, there's no way I'm going to be able to use that, that bronzing powder, that contour does not look like an appropriate shade for my skin tone and what is this this is like a finishing powder i don't use finishing powders i never use finishing i never use powders and, and then i read it and i'm like oh that's a highlighter that's not a highlighter it is so pretty it is so pretty and this contour is almost perfection on my skin tone so i know it looks really light i know it does but it is beautiful and the powders are beautiful and it just looks almost natural on my skin. So I I would say get yourself the mini. I don't think that you need to buy the full size. The full size is like 68 bucks or something like that. Buy the mini. The mini is beautiful. I have a foundation for you from Makeup Forever. This is the old packaging. They do have new packaging. It looks like a stouter bottle with like almost like a cream colored lid. But this is a beautiful foundation, much like the Dior Face and Body. It is a fuller coverage foundation, but it goes on and moves with your skin. Every time you smile, every time you crease your brow, every time anything happens, every time you squeeze your eyeballs shut, 
it's not going to sink into those fine lines and wrinkles. It's very breathable and moves with your skin. And because of that, I love it. It is a medium buildable coverage foundation. And then I have this one product by Makeup by Mario, and this is his sculpting stick. You guys, I know that I was really late to the game on this, uh, not trying it until I had been out for like six months, but this is a beautiful contour. I think like when it comes down to it, it blends so, so well. This is a great shade for my skin tone, but like it, just blending it out, you guys can see it blends so, so easily and just looks really natural. I hate the brush on the end. I've used the brush on the end before because I got this in not only the sculpting stick, but also the blush stick. I used it on the blush stick. I hate the blending brush on that product, but the product is really, really nice. And then I have two palettes for you. When I think through the lens of Natasha Denona and what would suit a lot of people, I have Biba and I have Retro. Now I have palette roulettes on both of these. I will go ahead and stick that up in the cards, but the Biba palette is an all neutral eyeshadow palette. And I think this is a really great palette for anybody to have in their collection. It's a workhorse palette. It is one of her full size. It is one of her more expensive $129 palettes. But you're going to get a good variety of neutrals in here in orange, pinky, and then kind of like grayish tones. And I think it's a great palette for anybody to have in their collection, even Coming from me, a color lover, I love having this palette in my collection. I would recommend this one over um, bronze any day because you're getting like really one side of the spectrum when it comes to neutral or natural tones, and that is the orangey side. Um, this one is gorgeous. And then this one, Retro, I live in a world where purple is a transition. And this is the perfect palette for purple as a transition. It's got those beautiful dusty rose shades, beautiful burgundies and mauve tones. It's just such a really, really pretty palette. And everything I put in, and I think also that when I think through the lens of these two palettes together, look how perfectly those two partner. Like I think that they would just partner so well. Now this is not me saying, go run out and get both of these palettes. This is just me saying those are the perfect partners for each other. So I'm going to take a second and pause so I can figure out how to screen record. Okay, I'm hoping this works out. If it does, then you should be able to see my phone over here, my screen. And what we're looking at right now is my cart. <laughs> And you can see that my cart has a $271.60 value in it currently. And I am pretty interested in almost everything in this cart. You might be able to talk me out of some of this stuff. I'm probably not going to order right away. So please let me know your thoughts down in the comments section. But first thing on the list is this. This is the Charlotte Tilbury Mini Hollywood Flawless Filter. Now this is something that my friend Anna uses all the time and states that it is pretty fantastic. So um, I also hear a lot about it. So I do have it in the shade 3 Fair. I thought the shade, the medium shade just looked a little bit too like golden for me. I, and from what I understand, you can use this as a primer or as a highlighter. So I'm interested in that. And um, the next thing on the list is the Fenty Skin Hydra. Oops, what happened? What did I do just now? I don't know. The next thing on the list is the Fenty Skin Hydra Reset Intensive Recovery Glycerin Hand Mask. Now this is totally a YouTube made it, made me buy it kind of product if I do purchase it because I really am only thinking of it because I saw it in a couple other people's recommendation videos. So I too watch recommendation videos because I might have a cart all on my own and a loves list all on my own, but there are things that I don't pay attention to that I maybe don't know. Ulta Beauty does carry Fenty, but we don't have Fenty skin at this point in time. 
my hands are so dry all the time and I'm always putting some kind of moisturizer on them and sometimes that moisturizer irritates them and then they get worse. So um, I would love to have just some kind of uh, recovery glycerin hand mask for me to wear at night. Maybe put some socks on my hands and go to bed and wake up with uber soft hands. That would be amazing. So that is on my list. The Natasha Denona Pastel Eyeshadow Palette. Okay, y'all know I am a Natasha Denona queen, but pastels just is not my thing. It's just not. So I could probably be talked out of this palette if I'm honest. But with that said, I have also seen a couple videos lately with people purchasing this palette or getting in PR or however they're attaining it and utilizing it with Circle Loco. Now, I think that that is the smartest thing I have ever heard in my life. And Circle Loco is one of Natasha's palettes that I purchased last year that I was pretty unimpressed with. I know that this palette in my collection would not be a standalone palette, but I would love it in my collection to partner with some of the deeper, you know, more saturated color stories uh, and just bringing that pastel pop into them, I would love that. And I'm also really, really interested in this palette because it has so many duochromes in it. Like the swatches are beautiful. So um, I told you about this char the Charlotte Tilbury Lip Cheat Lip Liner there in Iconic Nude. One that might surprise you is this Huda Beauty Rose Quartz Eyeshadow Palette. I know, I know, I have dogged on Mercury Retrograde, but I have also said that Mercury Retrograde has some of the most beautiful shimmers in my palette collection. And I firmly stand behind that thought process. I do believe that Rose Quartz would also fall into that, that place. Where I get kind of tripped up is that the mattes and Huda Beauty's big palettes, they all look the damn same. So I guess that's where I kind of get tripped up with purchasing her bigger palettes. But this is the first big palette that has really screamed at me since it came out, since like Rose Gold Remastered. So I'm really quite interested in that palette. I am also interested in the Tower 28 Beach please lip and cheek cream blush you guys already heard me talk about this one which is in power hour the one in my love slit or the one in my cart currently is magic hour um the last thing in my cart right now is the natasha denona mini xenon eyeshadow palette i think i talked about this in my last palette roulette palette review of a natasha denona palette because i am really interested in this palette it's only 25 dollars. like it's a palette that i would purchase anyway so i might take that out and just purchase it a different time i don't know um this fell out of my basket and i i think that's what i did accidentally a few minutes ago when i was like what did i just do this is the natasha denona eyeshadow palette five it is the number two one it is currently on sale for 33 dollars and 60 cents from 48 dollars. i'm just wondering if it'll stay on sale so it's just got these really beautiful like rosy burgundy tones like wines i think that this would partner very well with the retro eyeshadow palette so that is why I want that. So this is my loves list that we're in right now. I also have the Pat McGrath Labs Skin Finish Divine Powder Blush in Flirtatious. This is a soft beige, really beautiful, like just kind of like pinky nude shade. I just really love it. It's that um, first one there, I do believe. And it's just like soft enough that it could be like totally a natural flush on your cheeks but it has that like satiny look and feel to it so I did get the trio that came out with two of her blushes and one of her highlights and was told by a person in my comment section that the full sizes are completely different that those formulas and those little holiday palettes are quite a bit different than the actual full-size ones are so this is on my loves list it is something that i'm contemplating on whether i want to put into my basket or no 
Then I have this Divine um, Clean Dewy Cream Blush by Rose Ink. This is totally inspired by Alicia. Alicia? I'll put her picture up here. She is, she did a cream blush video the other day, which I've been thinking about doing actually. And she talked about this blush only in a different color. Uh, I love, I loved the pigmentation on that and just really the um, consistency that it looked like it had. So, and I love that it's a refillable compact and that you could buy just the single to put back in it when you, you could buy different colors and just put it into this compact. So I did love that. Um, because I've had such a love affair with Dior lately, I did put the Backstage Concealer in here as well. I have shade 2N, which is for light skin with a neutral undertone. It does look a little bit light for me in this picture, but I think that it it when I looked at all the other colors, it really did look to be close to matching this overall. But also I'm really interested in it because it has a brush applicator. Now I have several concealers in this loves list and I don't wear concealer. If you all know that, you do, you know, you know. So <laughs> I don't know. That might be something I pick up. It might be something that I just say like why why Donna why is this even in your basket so then I had a couple fragrances also I've really been into fragrance lately and I don't know why like I just want to have like all the sexy sultry notes out there for scents and so this K. Ollie one is one that I think I would get along with really well it's warm and spicy and it's got warm and sweet gourmands in it. I really think that I would love this. Amber resin, benzoin, and cellone cinnamon. I don't know. It smells like it would be like a cookie to me. And forgive me if I pronounced any of that stuff wrong. Like I said, just now starting to get into fragrances. So don't come for me. This Tom Ford Bitter Peach, I have heard nothing but amazing things about it's damn expensive so that is why I have the little tiny guy in here but $75 for this guy it is a floral fragrance but it's also a fruity floral and I get along with fruity florals really well I don't love a straight up floral though so I'm really thinking that I would love to pick up one of these Tom Ford fragrances I also have this lost cherry one and this Lost Cherry one has warm and spicy scents with warm and sweet gourmands. Again, like the Kaoli one, um, it has black cherry, tonka bean, and almond. I love the smell of almonds and tonka bean together. Oh my God. So that would be the one that I would probably pick up before I picked up the Bitter Peach one. But man, I've heard some great things about Bitter Peach as well. Uh, this Nest New York and this Mason Margiela, Margala, Margala, I don't know. They are sets. I love those replica scents. I think that they are amazing. I've had a couple little like vials of replica scents in the past. I think I could get along with one of those. And I love that they're not super expensive for some decent size, you know, travel bottles. The Nest ones is $23 for just like three spritzers, but what draws my attention to Nest is I've heard some really great things about Nest, but what draws me away from Nest is that it seems like they're all florals. So y'all let me know what you think about any of these scents, if you know anything specific about any of these scents and what you think of them. I have a second set from Replica on here. Uh, I think I would like either one of these sets but this one the $35 one you get a lot more different scents than you do with the $68 one so I'm just not sure which one I would pick up I do want to test out the fragrances I want to find my signature scents I mean shit I'm 45 and I don't think I've ever had a signature scent so I would love to figure one out at this point this is another concealer that I has, well, you guys can see two concealers on here at this point in time. LYS Triple Fix Brightening Concealer. I, I mean, I want to try it just because I want to try more from LYS. I love their bronzer. I love their blushes. I hesitate to believe that, that it will be bad. <laughs> 
I don't know. It's a concealer. Why am I like this? The Kosas one, I've heard really great things about the Kosas one. I've heard really horrible things about its component, but I've heard really great things about the, the concealer. And the fact that it has like um, a daytime like eye cream built into it, like that's amazing. So I don't know. I kind of want to pick up one of these. I kind of want to pick up one of these. I kind of see myself with two concealers in my basket and I don't even wear a concealer. So the Charlotte Tilbury Pillow Talk Medium, it would just be like a repurchase. I think I do want to get the Iconic Nude before I repurchase that one. Oh my goodness. These Armani blushes. Don't those look beautiful? Yeah. I want those two. Those are cream blushes, but those are the two that you guys see right here. Those are the only two shades that are left out of like, I think 10 shades. I don't know if I like either one of these. So these will probably end up, well, that um, peach, peach pink one um, is really pretty. It did look really pretty. I don't know if I will end up picking it up just because. So if we look at the picture, like it is number 51. So it's that one there. Such a really pretty shade, but I, I don't know. I would kind of love to have one of these other shades, if I'm honest, like something that looks a little more neutral, a little more brown actually is where I think I could go in my blush collection without really overlapping in shades very much. I, I also have the Beauty Blender Power Puff Pocket, which is totally, a, would be a purchase because somebody on YouTube taught me, talked me into it. Like that's why it's there, but it's out of stock right now. So that saves me just $15 of abnormal, stupid spending for myself. The Huda Beauty Wild Obsessions Eyeshadow Palette and Python I have wanted since it came out. It is gorgeous. I just struggle. And the Huda Beauty Naughty Nude. Now, the Naughty Nude just landed itself on this wish list because I don't know. I don't know why. I don't know why it's in my loves list, if I'm honest. I just have such a hard time purchasing from Huda because her consistency is shit sometimes but when it's not shit it's really good so I guess that's where I'm at with that I have a Patrick Ta cream contour and bronzer duo on here because I love his blushes so so much I haven't tried his bronzers yet I would love to try his bronzers I also have the say sun melt natural cream bronzer again from Alice Alicia I, I keep wanting to say Alicia because I work with an Alicia that's spelt the same way so from Alicia and there's a couple other people actually that say that this say sun melt natural cream bron bron bronzer bronzer it's obviously very late I need to go to bed is very very nice so I have the Kosas Color and Light Cream Blush. I have this in here twice, actually. I have it down here as well. So I have it in 8th Muse, which is a pink duo with a youthful rosy tone and a champagne. And then I have Tropic Equinox, which is a warm neutral prismatic bronze shade. I think that's what I want from a new cream blush in my collection, if I'm honest. I have a couple of Charlotte Tilbury cheek to chic blushes. This one here in Pillow Talk Intense and this one up here in Walk of No Shame. I don't know, something about those just call my name. And I know that the Charlotte Tilbury powders are amazing, beautiful, finely milled powders. So I can't imagine that they're horrible. Cinema Secrets, of course, you guys know how I feel about Cinema Secrets. A couple more of the Tower 28 blushes. Um, the LYS blush, this one is in a rosy mauve tone. I think this one has been around for a while. It's self-love. It's been in my loves list since March of 2021. So there's that. Uh, Armani Power Fabric Concealer. This would be a repurchase, so that probably won't land in my basket anytime soon, but I do love that concealer. 
from a person who does not like concealer. That is an amazing concealer. Um, Milk Makeup Flex Foundation Stick, again, has been in my loves list since January of 2021. I don't think I'll be picking that up. But, I mean, I guess it's a formula I'd love to explore. No Charlotte Til Tilbury Airless Flawless Finishing Powder. I won't be picking that up this time, but it is a powder that I absolutely 100% love. Um, Pat McGrath Bronze Seduction. Man, if I was going to pick up another Pat McGrath palette, that one would be the one. But I'm not doing that this time. I've got so much else on my plate. And then the Jouer Cosmetics Blush Bouquet Duo in Rose Gold. And it's got, so it's got a warm, shimmering, golden peach, like, highlighty tone. And then a beautiful, like, peachy rose uh, shade of blush. And this has been in my loves list since 2018. And obviously, I haven't taken it out yet, but I also haven't purchased it yet. I have one of these duos by Jouer and I love it. It's beautiful, but it's been forever since I used it. So I just think I should probably delete that out of my loves list. I'm probably not going to pick that up. So with that said, that is my recommendations and also my wish list for the Sephora sale, which started, which starts today. So I hope that you guys enjoyed it. I hope that you found something that you also maybe want to pick up and I hope that you found this useful as far as a video goes let me know of my wish list items which you would pick up I would enjoy any thoughts and opinions you have on any of the products that I have in my wish list my loves list my cart please let me know what your thoughts are I would love to hear from you guys down in the comment section with that said that's all I have for you happy shopping I hope that you guys enjoyed this video and I hope that you are going to give it a big thumbs up. I hope that you subscribe before you go. I hope that you guys had an awesome March and I hope that you're ready for April. I hope that you guys are having a great time and living your best life, getting along as best you can in this crazy chaotic world that we're living in. I hope that you and yours are safe, that you're well, that you're healthy, and that you are all loving each other but loving each other from afar. And until next time... Bye, friends.